imagine this scenario. You're driving down the road, and all of a sudden, a cat runs in the road right in your vehicle's path. Usually, when something gets in our way that we don't expect, we have to react quickly. So, usually, you would swerve or stop. Let's say you decide to swerve. You're going to you jerk the wheel, but you're going too fast. So, your car spins out of control. You go into the oncoming lane. You could possibly hit another car or go off the road. Or, you could decide to stop. And so you slam on your brakes, but the car behind you is going too fast, and they rear end you. That's going to cost a lot of money, right? Either one of those options. You're going to have medical expenses that you could get hurt, or other people could get hurt, and your car could get damaged, or other people's car. So you're going to have a lot of money spent in medical expenses and damage costs. Human costs for an animal problem. The problem is that there are too many unwanted animals in our community, so incidents like this happen. As Joshua Frank said, a researcher on the ecology of animal overpopulation said, animal overpopulation is a human problem with human costs deriving from human resources. So when we talk about animal overpopulation, it's not just something that has to do with animal, animals or animal owners, but all of us. I've done veterinary, or I've taken veterinary technology courses, and I've also done thorough researching on spaying and neutering. Today I'm going to inform you there are many benefits to spaying and neutering, and today I'm going to inform you of three of them. The benefits are financial, medical and behavioral, or medical and behavioral, and then ethical. There are many costs associated with the overpopulation of animals. Over Half a million, there are over half a million dog bites reported in each year in the United States alone. Think of all the money that we spent on medical expenses. Also, did you know that 6% of all car accidents are caused by animals? Like the situation I described earlier? Well, 6% doesn't seem like a lot, but when we consider the fact that there are over 6 million car accidents alone in the United States, that is about 360,000 car accidents caused by animals each year. And a little over 1% of all car accidents are caused by animals and result in human fatalities. That's over 60,000 people a year. Also, it costs less to license our animals when they're spayed or neutered. This is something that cities impose in order to encourage responsible pet ownership and encourage owners to help in the pet population. $500 million a year goes to animal control, regulating the numbers of animals. That, is made, that money is paid for by your state and local taxes. So that's your money that's spent on animal control. So theoretically, spaying and neutering makes less animals. So less animals in our community makes, makes it cost less to regulate the numbers of animals. Not only is spaying and neutering good for saving us money, but it's good for our pets too. <laughs> spaying and neutering eliminates the risk of ovarian and testicular cancer in pets. And spaying and neutering tends to expand, expand the life expectancy of your pets. And also, because spaying, spaying and neutering eliminate, decreases hormone levels, um, it, is, it tends to prevent or stop aggressive behaviors. Hmm. Ethically speaking, pet breeders, private owners, and pet stores intentionally produce, produce a million animals a year, each year. But the United States Humane Society estimates that there are six to eight million animals enter shelters each year. And they also estimate that three to four million animals are euthanized each year. That's about half of them. And the animals that are spayed, I forgot to give you my first thing. This is a, a table of shows you how many, just 
one cat and her mate and their offspring within nine years can produce 11 million because And the animals that are euthanized aren't just old or sick, but they are, some of them are young, some of them are old, some of them are big, some of them are small. And there simply aren't enough homes for these animals. And so spaying and neutering is one method to controlling pet overpopulation. So to summarize, I have told you of the financial, medical, and behavioral, and ethical benefits to spaying and neutering. And I hope that I've educated you on the benefits of staying in